the time. What if time, as you know, is an illusion? What if the past you remember, the present you experience, and the future you anticipate all exist simultaneously, written into the very fabric of the cosmos? In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Have you ever wondered when time began? What triggered its movement? To explore these questions, let's journey back 2,000 years to the halls of Aristotle's school, where he shared his thoughts on the nature of time. Aristotle understood time as an entity that could only exist alongside motion. He described time as an accident of motion, meaning that it was a measurement of physical change or movement. In other words, time was not an independent force, but rather a way to quantify the flow of motion. Without change or movement, there would be no time. Now let's move forward to the 12th century and listen to what the great Sufi philosopher Ibn al-Arabi has to say about time. According to him, time, as we perceive it, is a reflection of God's eternal reality. In his view, God is the ultimate source of all time, and the very concept of time is a manifestation of divine will. Ibn al-Arabi based much of his thought on the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do not curse time, for Allah is time. Time is not an independent or separate entity, but is inextricably tied to God's eternal existence. He distinguishes between two kinds of time, the time of God, which is eternal and beyond human comprehension, and the time of human beings, which is momentary and fleeting. For Ibn al-Arabi, human time or waqt is merely an illusion that helps us experience our own existence in the physical world. It is, in essence, a measure of our temporal perception. God's time, on the other hand, is eternal, without beginning or end, and is not bound by the limitations of human understanding. In my view, before the existence of anything except Allah, time did not exist. It was only when Allah commanded the pen, Al-Qalam, to write the time began. Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. He commanded it, write. The pen asked, O oh my Lord, what should I write? He said, write down destiny. So, the pen began writing everything that would happen from that moment until the Day of Judgment. This moment marks the inception of time. But why do I believe this? To understand, let's explore what modern physics has to say about time. Modern physics points to the Big Bang Theory as the origin of time. According to this theory, the universe started from a singularity, a point of infinite density, and began expanding about 13.8 billion years ago. The beginning of this expansion marked the beginning of time as we understand it. Before the Big Bang, it is theorized that time, as a dimension, didn't exist in the way we experience it now. The thing is, according to the Islamic perspective, Allah created the pen long before the creation of this universe. In fact, there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim that says, God ordained the measures of creation 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth while his throne was over the water. It is important to remember that the exact span of those years is unknown to us. One year of those 50,000 years could be equivalent to a thousand years on earth or perhaps even 50,000 years in this world as mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'arij. So what exactly is time? What we normally think about time is that only the present moment is real. The past no longer exists, and the future is yet to come. This view can be explained by the concept of a moving now, where time keeps progressing, bringing new states of reality into existence while the previous states fade away into non-existence. For example, imagine watching a movie each scene appears and then disappears as the movie progresses. The current scene is what you're experiencing right now. It's real. But as the movie moves forward, the previous scenes no longer exist in the present moment, even though you can remember them. 
Similarly, the future scenes haven't arrived yet. So, just like the movie, time moves forward, creating a new present while the past becomes a memory and the future remains unseen. But this theory raises some major issues. For example, if the past no longer exists, how can past events influence the present? For instance, a tree that grew from a seed decades ago stands as evidence of a past cause, yet presentism would assert that the past is unreal. The theory of relativity too poses a great challenge to this idea. As observers in space-time experience different presents, the present of one observer can be the past of another. But according to presentism, the past does not exist. So how can one's past be the present of another? Since the dawn of human thought, time has been seen as a flowing river, carrying us from the past into the future. We imagine ourselves as passengers drifting forward, leaving behind the past as the future rushes toward us. Imagine a reality where time does not flow like a river, but stands as a monumental structure. This is the essence of the block universe. This universe is a four-dimensional block composed of three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. Within this block, every event, past, present, and future, exists simultaneously. Here, time is not a flowing entity, but a fixed coordinate, much like points on a map. According to this, time doesn't flow or move forward as we perceive it. Instead, what we call now is simply our subjective experience of a particular moment in the block. The block universe. Theory suggests that everything that has happened is happening, and will happen is already written or fixed within the structure of the universe. Imagine the universe as a complete book, where every page represents a moment in time. All the pages, moments, exist simultaneously, and the story is already written. To understand the block universe, imagine the universe as a giant loaf of bread. Each slice of this loaf represents a single moment in time. For you, one slice might represent today, while the slices behind it represent the past, and those ahead represent the future. In this model, all the slices, the past, present, and future, exist together as part of a single unchanging loaf. You may feel like you're moving through time, experiencing one slice after another, but that motion is merely an illusion. Your perception of time's flow is like a projector playing a movie. Each frame of the film exists all at once, but you experience them sequentially. The foundation of the block universe lies in Einstein's special theory of relativity. In the theory of relativity, time is treated as the fourth dimension, inseparably linked with the three dimensions of space. Together, they form a four-dimensional continuum called space-time. Imagine a map. A point on the map can be defined by two coordinates, latitude and longitude. If you add a third coordinate, altitude, you can locate objects in three-dimensional space. Now add a fourth coordinate, time. This gives you the exact position of an event in space-time. In this 4D view, space tells you where something is, Time tells you when it happens. In the block universe, space-time is like a giant 4D map where every event, every moment in your life, every explosion of a star, every particle interaction is permanently fixed at its coordinates. Think about a loaf of bread again. Each slice represents a single moment in time. In 3D, you can only see one slice at a time, the now you're experiencing. In 4D, you see the entire loaf at once. Every slice, from the first to the last, exists simultaneously. For an observer outside of space-time, like viewing the loaf as a whole, there is no past or future. There is only the entire structure of time, fully realized. Our perception of movement through time is like a spotlight moving along the slices of the loaf. We feel the present as real because that's the slice our consciousness is currently illuminating. 
Einstein's relativity not only reveals time as a dimension, but also shows that it's not constant. Instead, it's relative, varying for observers depending on their motion or gravitational field. Simply put, what is now for one observer might be in the past or future for another. Imagine there's a distant star, star X, 1,000 light years away from Earth. At some point in the past, this star exploded in a massive supernova. Observer A, standing on Earth, sees the light from the supernova today. To them, the explosion is a present event, happening now. Meanwhile, observer B, an astronaut traveling towards star X at nearly the speed of light, perceives time differently. Because they're moving toward the star, the light from the explosion reaches them much sooner. For observer B, the supernova might have happened hundreds of years ago. Even though both observers are witnessing the same event, their perceptions of when it occurred are entirely different. From observer A's perspective, the explosion is now. From observer B's perspective, it's in the distant past. Both timelines are equally real. They are simply different paths through the space-time loaf, shaped by their relative motions. Neither is more true than the other. This relativity of simultaneity shows that there is no universal now. What we call the present is merely a subjective slice of the block universe. This poses a very profound question. If the future already exists in the same way as the past, does this mean our choices are predetermined? Are we merely actors following a script that's already written? Remember the hadith that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. He commanded it, write. The pen asked, O oh my Lord, what should I write? He said, write down destiny. So the pen began writing everything that would happen from that moment until the day of judgment. And where did this pen write the decree of everything? It is called Allah al-Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. Allah refers to it by various names in the Qur'an. He calls it Kitab al-Mubin, the clear book, meaning there is nothing ambiguous in it. It is described as Kitab al-Mastur, unrolled, untouched tablet. It contains all knowledge, as Allah tells us, every event, even something as small as the falling of a leaf. Imagine the magnitude of this. Every leaf that falls, at what speed it falls, the type of leaf, where it falls, who picks it up, and what happens to it afterward, all of this is recorded in Allah al-Mahfuz. Everything that has happened will happen, or could happen, is written in this tablet. So the question, do we have free will? Think of your life as a movie. The entire film exists in its entirety. Every scene, every line, every plot twist has already been shot and is fixed in the film reel. From the perspective of the viewer, however, the movie unfolds in a linear fashion. The viewer experiences the movie one scene at a time, and in each scene, the characters appear to make decisions. But these decisions were made long before the movie was even shown. In the block universe, you are both the actor and the audience in the movie of your life. While the script is already written, you still experience each moment as if it were a real-time choice. Your perception of choice and agency remains intact. The idea of free will, in this case, is not about altering the script. It's about experiencing and reacting to it in a way that feels personal and authentic. Moreover, there is a possibility that the script can be changed in Allah al-Mahfuz. Allah gazes upon Allah al-Mahfuz hundreds of times a day, and with each glance, he decrees what he wills exalting the humble, humiliating the honored, enriching the poor, impoverishing the rich, giving life to one person and death to another. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, nothing can change the divine decree except dua, and nothing increases life except righteousness. If we view our universe as a 4D block, it implies that the universe progresses according to a specific law, intricately woven into the fabric of its existence. From the Islamic perspective, we understand this as Allah's divine decree. 
What's crucial to note is that every individual, every planet, every star, every galaxy, every molecule, and every atom operates within its own unique decree, each governed by its own specific law. However, it is through supplication that one can influence and even alter this decree. This also gives an idea of the free will. Allah al-Mahfuz offers us a unique perspective on time. It seems to act as the source from which time emanates, with different branches extending outward, each governed by its own specific law or decree. If supplications can alter the decree, it suggests that the future is not set in stone, but instead it is dynamic and can be influenced. This brings into question whether the future is truly fixed or if it can change in response to our actions, prayers, and decisions. Quantum physics, as it often does, throws a wrench into our conventional understanding of time. In the next video, we'll explore the branches of time and how quantum physics shakes up everything we think we know about it. If every moment exists perpetually, the block universe offers a comforting perspective on mortality. For instance, imagine a loved one who has passed away. Rather than being confined to memory or the past, their existence remains preserved in the slice of space-time where they lived. This means their laughter, love, and life are eternally part of the universe's fabric, accessible at their respective coordinates in space-time.